Hello everyone. Um, from me and from the noble steed in my hotel room. Um, right, so yeah, I was about to say day 41. It's not day 41, it's the day after I finished. Uh, it's the 6th of January. Um, and yeah, the cycling part of Cycle for Change is over. Um, so I've decided to try and do a bit of a summary video. I won't be able to get everything in this, um, but just to sort of round things up really. Um, so I finished the journey yesterday. I decided to finish in Aberystwyth uh, on the west coast of Wales. Um, and I decided to finish there for, for many reasons. Um, lots, of, lots of little things, um, nothing major. There was no sort of massive problems. There was no you know, great thing that stopped me. Um, it was just, it, it, most of all, um, I suppose, if I had to sort of sum up all the little bits and pieces, COVID obviously made things difficult. It didn't stop proceedings. It just made things a little bit more tricky. Um, it meant that I could no longer just assume I could sort of stay with people. I didn't, uh, I didn't have the sort of sensation that I could um, just speak to people I met along the way and say, oh, do you mind if I stay with you? Do you mind if maybe I camp in your garden? You could see the sort of hesitance in people's face. They weren't too, too sure if that was okay or not. Whereas when I started, it was just, it was all kind of cool. People were like, yeah, that sounds amazing. Yeah, camp in a garden. There's also that assumption that if you camp in someone's garden, you kind of need to use their facilities. You need to use their bathroom or whatever. Um, you can't just go to the loo in their garden. Um, so, you know, it's one of those sort of uh, assumptions that you're going to have to use their bathroom. And that isn't ideal when it's a pandemic and people are trying to keep their distance from people. Um, so that was one thing. Um, there's no wild camping options now that I'm back in uh, England and Wales. Um, whereas in Scotland, I could just chuck a tent anywhere. So, you know, not being able to wild camp and having sort of the forecast of quite wet weather, um, that really could, does make it quite tricky. Um, you need to be able to make sure you have a couple of, of dry nights. Um, wild camping and camping in constant rain, is it's doable, um, but it's really not very healthy. You're just breathing in moist, damp air all the time, and it's not ideal, um, and you struggle to dry kit. Um, so having occasional dry accommodation makes a big difference. And when you're um, unable to book campsites because they're closed, when um, that's due to it, partly the season thing, it's also partly due to COVID, when you're unable to get accommodation in, in sort of strangers' gardens or, or maybe houses like I was at the start, um, that all makes it quite difficult. Um, so yeah, that was tricky. Uh, my knees, I've mentioned it before, I'm not going to make a big deal about it, but um, uh, I have got sore knees. They've been sore since pretty much the first week. Um, a lot of that is just the mechanical movement of cycling all day long, every day. Um, but a big sort of change in the last couple of weeks, uh, my left knee, um, it's gone from being just like, if imagine that's my kneecap, it's gone from being just a sort of twinge on the top of the, the sort of corner, if you like, of the kneecap. I've got that on both knees, but on my left knee, um, if you try and imagine, if you're looking down at your left knee, where like your um, thigh muscles meet your your knee, on the inside of sort of the thigh muscle and the um, the ligaments on the inside of your knee, um, towards the sort of three quarters or halfway point of a day, especially a really hilly day, that was getting extremely painful, and it was actually starting to sort of it felt like it was getting I don't know it's hard to explain, but it just felt extremely painful and swollen when I was trying to push pressure down onto my um my onto my foot i suppose onto the pedal um it was painful um but not so painful that it would stop me riding but it was painful it, it was a sensation that it felt like i couldn't actually put pressure onto my foot i was pressing down but the pressure wasn't hitting the foot it wasn't transferring through to the pedal it was on the right but not on the left and as a result i was overworking the right um, and just causing problems um um, so, you know, it, it wasn't the be all and end all, but it was something I was quite conscious of and it was getting worse and worse and worse. So I didn't want to keep pushing that. So that was another thing. Um, uh, as I said, yes, obviously missing home. Um, you know, I'm a husband and a father and I've got responsibilities at home, but also being away from my kids and being away from my wife has been, um, it, it's been brutal. It's been absolutely sort of tearing me apart the whole way. Um, leaving home at the start was hard, but Every week it's got progressively more difficult. And as I said, that's not the only reason to go home, but it's something that's on my mind. And it's not just the fact of me missing missing home. It's knowing that my um, my kids are missing me. Um, and I don't want this to be detrimental on them. I don't want this to be a negative for them. Um, all the way through, they've been kind of asking, you know, where are you, what are you doing, what are you up to? And now they're starting to get to the point where they're asking, when are you coming home? You know, when are we going to see you again? We want a cuddle, all that kind of stuff. It's so that the feel is changing for them, and you know I, I'm quite.
quite conscious of that. So you know, in that sense, it's definitely the right time to go home. Uh, there's also lots of little signs as well. Um, uh, I think in, in, I'm not one for sort of um, signs and metaphors, but um, if I could say the bike was telling me to come home, then maybe it was. Um, the other day, uh, this part, this is a, um, uh, a, a mounting point for the, the pannier rack. Um, I could hear a squeaking all day long as I was getting to my friend Giles' house. Uh, and I finally took a look to see what it was and I couldn't find the squeaking anywhere, I took the bags off and things and found that this had actually snapped. Um, it had snapped away and come away from the frame. Um, it wasn't the be all and end all, the, uh, the, the, the mount was, the, the rack was able to stay put without this, um, but that was a, a, a little sign that, um, yeah, something was, was giving up. <laughs> um, and also the drivetrain on the bike, um, the drivetrain is now due to, as in all the sort of cogs and the working parts, so the uh, the chain ring at the front and the cassette at the back and the chain itself, um, they're starting to wear out, um, skipping gears a lot. And that's not an indexing thing, it's actually the, the teeth are starting to wear through. And because it's an old bike, it's not that easy to get spares. You can't just go to a bike shop and get a new drivetrain. You have to sort of order parts in. And at the moment, ordering parts for bikes is incredibly difficult. So so that was that was a big element as well. Um, and as I said in previous video, the, the, if I could give like one... If I could quantify one reason for why I finished, it's the feel of it. Um, I've done a lot of this ride by by feel, uh, and what feels right and what um, what feels correct to me, um, and it just feels like the right time to stop. Um, I got the feeling that I was getting to a point where I was trying to push this to work rather than trying to just sort of follow it nicely as I was at the start. Um, it was getting a little bit more difficult to arrange everything, whether it was accommodation, whether it was the route, all sorts of different bits and pieces. Um, but yeah, it just felt a bit forced or was starting, starting to feel like it was going to be forced rather than me just sort of happily, merrily following it along. Um, so yeah, in that sense, that was a good time. Um, I could have carried on, you know, if I wanted to, I could have continued. There was probably accommodation options. There was, there was enough there that I could have could have carried on but it would have been a struggle um so yeah um so that's that i think um will i will i continue will i come back again um there's, there's always an element of unfinished business um but if i do do it again or do something like this again it won't be for a long time it'll be a while uh, my family needs me and i need them um so yeah it'll be a while before i approach that again um but yeah i'd like to think there's unfinished business there who knows we'll see in the future um on that front, um, apologies, um, huge apologies to anyone that I said I would come and stay with. Um, I always said, you know, it's, it's a maybe if I'll come and find you, but um, there's so many people on the way. Um, uh, so Marcus in Chepstow, um, uh, Johnny in Swansea, um, Tom in Bristol. Me and Tom have been trying to arrange a bike ride on a beer for about 10 years now, and we thought this was going to be it. Um, it's not happened. Um, who else? Uh, Mikey and Grant uh, down in Devon. Um, Sorry guys, I'm not going to get to see you for a while. Um, all my um, extended family down in Devon, sorry guys, um, I'll see you at some point. Um, uh, Barnaby from Leaping Fish, um, I was going to meet up with you and, and your family, so sorry about that. Um, Steve, and, uh, Steve and Zoe, um, Steve and Jane, all these people down the south coast. Um, yeah, There's so many people that I, that I had hoped to meet up with uh, and see along the way, but it's, it's just not worked out. Um, so... One day I'll, I'll I'll put a note in, and at some point I'll come back on a bike, hopefully, and uh, and yeah, we'll we'll finish finish what I've started, but we'll see. Um, thank yous. Uh, phew, how do I begin? Um, the thank yous. Thank you to all the Cycle for Change partners. Um, anyone who's provided kit or uh, food or nutrition or anything to do with this project, it's been absolutely amazing to have um, the support and the. Uh, uh, the sort of backing of, of partners and sponsors. So so thank you to anyone who's had an involvement. I don't want to list you all now. I'll, I'll do a separate post about that, but thank you so much. Um, thank you to anyone who's helped with accommodation or advice or guidance along the way. Uh, anyone who's offered anything to me. I could not have done it without the just seemingly never-ending generosity of, of the public. Um, people I've never met before who've gone out of their way and, and helped me as much as they can. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, thank you for anyone, sort of all, what do you want to call it, the, the Cycle for Change community, the following, anyone who's made a comment or a, a compliment or a message of support or encouragement or added to the Cycle for Change playlist or made a donation, anything, uh, anything that's to do with the positive side of this. Um, thank you so much. I, it's, I can't really put into words how much it's meant to me to, to receive messages from people I've never, never met who say, um, 
you know, you've been an inspiration. You've you've made me decide to to go ride my bike. You you've made me want to do do more um, environmentally friendly stuff. You've made me want to to make changes in my life for climate change. Um, I never ever ever expected this to be something that would inspire others and would, you know, um, to to that sort of level. I thought people would be interested in it. I didn't think they would reach out to me and say you've inspired me. That's that's absolutely mind blowing. Um, so thank you to to anyone in that sense. Um, uh, thank you most importantly uh, this is a huge thank you um, to my wife Claire um, and to my boys um, to, to have the I think it's not permission but to, to have the support and the backing to for them to say, uh, for Claire to say like yes go and do this you need to do it um, you know I'll, I'll take I'll take care of the boys while you're away um, I don't know who's had the harder job me or Claire, <laughs> to look after um, our two boys, to look after any two kids for six weeks uh, over Christmas, over New Year, while having a job and while having COVID, she had COVID while I was away, um, you know, and obviously my parents and my extended family and all my wife's friends and our neighbours have all helped out and chipped in, um, school as well, um, teachers, you know, other friends, parents, the amount of people that have helped out and supported while I've been away, um, that has not gone unnoticed and I am fully aware that uh, I have been a, a sort of six week absent father <laughs> so or, and husband. Um, so so thank you so much um, for that. Um, so, God, looking back over um, the last six weeks, I don't even know where to begin. Um, 27th of November, if, if you think back to what, whatever you were doing on the, the end of November, that's one, 27th of November, when Storm Arwen was just about to hit the country, um, that's when I got on my bike at South Wold Pier, and my parents and Dan from World Land Trust um, waved me off, and, and that was it, I cycled away. And here I am on the 6th of January, um, looking back upon that and thinking, like, God, what on earth has happened to that last six weeks? Um, so much has, has happened in that time, so many experiences all positive even the sort of really tough times even when um i've said it before but even when i was sat on my bike looking down a massively steep hill um with gale force storm force wind blowing in my face with hail and sleep and snow and i was unable to roll down a hill i couldn't roll down the hill because the wind was so strong it was pushing me back up i had to pedal uh, at one point i had to get off and push because the weather was so bad i couldn't actually see anything it was dangerous to, to ride so I had to get off and push my bike down a hill. Um, freezing cold. I mean, Scarborough. I'm sure Scarborough's lovely, but I never want to go back there again. I don't think I've ever been that cold. I couldn't feel anything. Uh, my hands were so cold. I remember I actually broke a buckle on one of my panniers because I was squeezing so tight with my hands to pull to open the buckle. I couldn't feel what I was doing. and I couldn't feel how much pressure I was putting on, so I just broke the buckle. Um, yeah, just... Um, absolute that was that was when cold turned into pain like I was so painful with cold I could barely do anything um, so yeah Scarborough I'm sure you're amazing Scarborough but I hate you <laughs> um, so yeah um, even those hard difficult bits even Middlesbrough oh Middlesbrough cycling through Middlesbrough um, having my chain break just as it was going dark um, and then fixing it wrongly if you're threading it through the derailleur wrong and then trying to refix it again hands covered in grease and slime and all sorts from from doing that after i ripped the gloves i had some latex gloves and they ripped and it ended up covered in mess uh, and then it being night time and having to cycle through like uh, power stations dockyards packing factories building sites there's the whole industrial dockyard area of middlesbrough to get out the other side to then find a i was directed to a campsite that was a marshland um you know couldn't find accommodation i cycled all the way into the dark into hartlepool uh, and then just gave up and went into a hotel <laughs> and had a rest day afterwards and um, what a crazy day that was that that day never ended um yeah all those even though those are negative experiences i look back on them as positives they were all little steps little hurdles little mini accomplishments along the way every time i got through something difficult that meant i could carry on um, and I look back on them and think, yeah, well, I did that. I achieved it. I got past it. Um, uh, and that was, um, yeah, all those little achievements were huge. Um, so, God, there's all the things I can think about that, that I've, places I've been, people I've met, things I've seen, 
um, parts of the coastline I didn't know existed, um, places that are just beyond words in terms of how beautiful some places are. Um, Scotland, you know, I only saw a tiny part of Scotland. Um, I will always be gutted that I didn't get to go further, but I'm glad I didn't because I would have got snowed in. The, the weather changed as soon as I made that decision, so that was a good decision. Um, but the parts of Scotland that I did see were absolutely epic. It's like it's like Cornwall on steroids. It's just this incredible rugged coastline, uh, and every single bit of coastline is then dotted with like a stream or a castle or something else amazing. Um, so it really is just stunning, and it just goes on and on and on. Um, uh, Lake District, just the views in the Lake District are absolutely immense. Uh, and of course, Wales. Um, you probably saw, if you saw one of my videos of me cycling through Wales, I'd, uh, hard to explain, I was actually quite emotional just cycling through, through that. I never thought I would actually do that. I never for once thought I would cycle through the sort of Rid Dee Valley in, in Wales on this journey, um, somewhere I sort of I've spent a lot of time in the past and to have such nice weather and for that to be near the end of this journey was just amazing. Um, so yeah, too many, far too many good memories to try and encapsulate in one, one video um, or two. This will now be broken into two videos. Um, but yeah, absolutely incredible. Um, so yeah, I think, looking back, I, I, it never occurred to me that this would be so meaningful to me. I knew it would be a big experience. I knew it would be tough. I knew it would be something I'd look back on and be proud of. I knew that, but I never, never expected it to be such a meaningful thing. To, you know, I love riding bikes and to be able to ride a bike for six months, um, or six weeks, or six months, that would be epic. To be able to ride a bike for six weeks through some of Britain's most amazing coastline, um, to meet such amazing people, to have such incredible experience, and to do it, while raising the funds to, to buy and protect rainforest, something that means so much to me, someone who works in the outdoors, who has sort of carved a life out of being in and around the outdoors um, and the natural environment, to do something so meaningful as a journey for me and to do it while raising funds with the public to protect and buy rainforest and give back to the the natural world has given me so much. I mean, that, is, that just means so much to me. Um, and I, like I said before, I certainly didn't ever expect this to mean so much to other people. Um, you know, it's great. I, and, it, you know, that's obviously not a negative thing. It's, it's been absolutely amazing just to, to hear the, the, the response from people who say this has meant a lot to them. And people who, my little posts and videos, people who said it's become part of their day. Um, sorry, if that's going to stop, <laughs> um, it will come to an end. Um, so... On that note, um, the way to sort of round it up, lastly, um, uh, you know, this project has been amazing in terms of the fundraising. Um, I've always said along, I'm just on a little bike ride. You guys are the ones that are doing the fundraising and you, your fundraising has raised over <laughs> £7,800. Um, that is absolutely staggering, £7,800. Uh, and it's still sort of creeping up. There's still little donations coming in here and there. Um, that will buy and protect and preserve over 56,500 square metres of rainforest in Guatemala. How incredible is that? That is absolutely amazing. So well done you. <laughs> that is phenomenal. Um, anyone who's donated or been, been involved with fundraising or donations for this, just know that somewhere out there in Guatemala is a tiny piece of rainforest that's yours. You've protected it, you've paid for it, you've bought it, it's yours. And it is there and all the wildlife that is, that is living within it. So thank you so much. Um, I'll try and organise a, a bit of a, a video through the World Land Trust to sort of let you guys know exactly what you've been protecting. But that is amazing. So thank you. Um, and I don't even know how gift aid works. I think gift aid gets, goes on top of that at the end. So it might actually be over sort of 8,000-ish. Um, phenomenal. Right. Um, so yes, that is that. Um, I think I'm going to go have some breakfast now. It's early. It's... Um, it's, it was coming up to nine. I've been up since about six o'clock this morning. It's coming to nine o'clock, so um, I couldn't sleep, obviously, again. So I'm going to go have some breakfast and wake up a little bit, um, and then um, I'm going to figure out what on earth I do with myself every day now. <laughs> um, I'll probably have a bit of a break from social media for a bit. Um, I might announce that later, um, but I will, of course, do a bit of a, a final summary once this is all finished up and the fundraising's all done, um, and I might put out some extra photos and things. Uh, but I will see you all soon. Okay, folks. Bye-bye.